Welcome in, everybody. This is our very first episode of Two G's and a Pod. James Jones, Amber Theo Harris with you. And this is a project that you and I, James, have been wanting to do forever since our green room discussions back at NFL Network with Reggie Wayne and Reggie Bush and all of those uh, co-hosts that we had. We always felt like there was more conversations to be had outside of whatever television program we're on. So the name Two G's on a Pod and in a Pod, <laughs> let me get it correct, Two G's in a Pod um, kind of speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. two g's in a pod it is finally happening we are going to have some fun we're gonna have some good guests we're gonna talk football we're gonna talk music we're gonna, have, we're gonna talk a little bit of everything we're gonna have, we're gonna have some crazy questions for these guests we're gonna have some fun it's gonna be it's gonna be fun and the idea is that we want to bring you guys inside uh, some of our friends that are still in the league that are recently retired um, that are great football minds and really give them an open platform here to speak their mind because they speak their mind to us off the record and we want to get some of that on the record to you guys and have a little fun with them. So today's episode coming up, we have future Hall of Famer, Devontae Ooh. Adams, three-time All-Pro, six-time yeah. Pro Bowler. He uh, definitely is going to be headed to the Hall of Fame. He had six 1,000-yard seasons. By the way, two seasons, two more. He should have had eight mm -hmm. or at 997. Yeah. Uh, Why no, wasn't nine, number nine, twelve seven. getting him three yeah. more well, yards? No, we, bl we blame that. We blame that on Devontae because we always say as a receiver, fall forward. <laughs> you know, <what> I'm <laughs> so he's you just one forward. of the greatest, and he's yeah. a friend of yours. You guys played together, and yeah. he always keeps it real. And so we're excited to have Devontae Adams. So, uh, without further ado, let's bring in Devontae. This is the point in the podcast where two G's in a pod becomes three G's in a pod because the biggest G of them all, Devontae Adams, now on the podcast. He joins us live from Hawaii. You woke up mm. at 8 a.m. just to get on two G's in a pod, and we appreciate you. Look, at where are you right now? Tell us where you are. I'm in Maui right now. I can't mm. I can't disclose my full location, but I, I'm, I am in Maui. <laughs> You deserve it a little R&R uh, &R with, with the wifey, so we're glad that you're having some fun after the season. But, um, look, this was this was a quite a year for you, Devontae, and you were a pro. JJ and I watched that. You were a professional the entire time. You were a leader the entire time. Um, you took heat for calling it like it is when Josh McDaniels uh, was there. Uh, you should have been getting the ball. I'll be the first to say that. Me and JJ were screaming that from the mountaintops. Um, yeah. you didn't, I'm going to kind of say this for you when it comes to the situation with the Raiders, you really didn't sign up for what was happening. You came to play with your close friend from Fresno state. He's gone. Josh McDaniels, there was this huge disconnect. And then here you are, you know, you were playing with a rookie quarterback. Um, you still have a, a big season. You still have a thousand yard season. Um, but give me your assessment of where the Raiders are right now and what needs to happen to be competitive in 2024. Well, it's the it's the weirdest um, dynamic or just feeling of a end of a season that I think I've had in my career so far. Just because typically when you're having a season that's not going well enough to make the playoffs, or, you know, any any situation like that, you're not you're not in it mentally enough, and you kind of can't wait to get to Hawaii. You can't wait to start making your trips and stuff like that because of you know the scope of the season. Which I think that's kind of where I would have been had we not made the change and got something new going and kind of revitalize the team. I think everybody was heading to a point where they kind of just was ready for the season to be open or be over because nobody was coming in that building, you know, with a smile on their face and really happy to be at work. And it just wasn't the same feeling that, you know, the, the reason why we all fell in love with the sport. So, um, you know, for me, it was definitely different. It's a lot of things have changed since I've been here. Not exactly how I drew it up, but, you know, in a sense, you do sign up for part of, you know, what happens once you sign up to, you know, being in a relationship, whatever it is, whatever comes with that, sometimes that's what you're saying that, you know, while you're there and, and, and present for that, you know, you got to kind of deal with some things and a little adversity. And that's definitely what happened this year. But I think I'm better for it, man. It's it is what it is. I definitely didn't enjoy some of the things, but I think the feeling now that we have as a team is kind of like upset that the season's over because I feel like we started to play our best football and really figure our ourselves out as a team um, near the end of the year so. You know, with the change and getting AP in there, definitely, you know, he got the most out of out of all the players and just made it a much much more enjoyable environment and, and fun space to be, um, you know, just to come in there no matter what it was, whether we had to start at seven because we had to go to the East Coast or Midwest or we needed, a, you know, we had a late start and it was shorter days. It was just a different feeling in the building. And I know a lot of guys can't wait to get back to it. So we just got to, you know, we got to figure out, fill a couple of voids and, and just keep adding a little bit more firepower and, 
um, you know, just keep. I think the the biggest thing for us is how we come out next year to start the year, just establishing who we want to be and kind of creating that identity early. That way you can, um, you know, it's, it's still going to be some adversity, but that, that way, you know, once you establish who you are early, you have time to, you know, be who you are, have some hiccups, but then not be in a place where you got to win every game to finish the season. Uh, you know, and it's, you never want to be in that position. It's, it's not easy. and You obviously want to play your best football at the end, but you don't want to be in a position where you have to win every game because that puts a lot of pressure on the squad. So we come out quicker next year, we'll, we'll be in a better squad. Speaking of playing your best football, bro, y'all played y'all best football under Antonio Pierce. What would it mean to get Antonio Pierce back in that building? Because you do not have to start all over, right? You just – Josh McDaniels sure. just left out of the building. When you came from the Packers to the Raiders, you had to really start all over even though D.C. was there. You know, Antonio yeah. Pierce took that thing over, man. You seen y'all having fun. Whether win or losing, right? Because, I mean, we're not going to win every game, but at the end of the day, you want to enjoy it. You want to have fun. I mean, at the, we play a game at the end of the day like we always say. What did Antonio Pierce mean to – to, to this team and what would it mean to have him back knowing that y'all ain't got to really start all over and you got to fill out a new coach, got to fill out a whole new offense. This coach got to win the locker room over. What would it mean to have him back in that building? Well, well, first off, and I'll say mo least important is we don't have to come back a week early. So we would, <laughs> we would, we would love to, you know, get that extra week off season. But um, in all seriousness though, AP, like I said, he kind of changed the culture, man. He, You look at, you look across the 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 roster and who we had to start of the year and who we finished with, it wasn't that much different, but it was a whole different brand of football being played yep. out there. So it just it's a it's a different feeling that he brings. And he you know, you you and I know better than almost anybody in the world that depending on the coach you have, they can get a certain thing and kind of allow you to realize your full potential. And then it just, mm -hmm. you know, that makes you play just better. And that's definitely what happened with our defense. And, you know, we couldn't be consistent enough on offense to be a playoff level team and you know championship caliber team but we definitely had the the pieces it was just more in my opinion honestly you know in hindsight everything's different I think it's going to be a whole new year next year I don't you know the, the system itself was made it hard enough for us to you know succeed you need a you need a Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers to go in there and have your quarterback and your team you know hit on every cylinder that consistently with that offense it's just a uh, nickel and dime offense, you know, that's the way it was, it was played and the way that he knows how to play it. But if you have a rookie quarterback who doesn't have much experience or a guy who doesn't have experience throwing the ball a certain type of way, you know, all the way up the field, you know, getting five, seven, just a bunch of first downs, first downs, first downs, you need explosive plays in this game. So, you know, that's, that's to me, it's about turnovers. If you ask me, if I was a head coach today, I would tell you football, the most important two things in football is turnovers. I mean, obviously, you, you time of possession, all that stuff. But for me, you look at the teams that's really doing it. They're not tripping off holding the ball. They're tripping off scoring points. Mm -hmm. Chiefs, all these teams have been doing that. So I feel like based off what we have personnel-wise, we could have done a lot better. But the, the scheme itself kind of held us back. And we worked with what we what we had. And we definitely didn't execute the best that, that we could have at all times. But, you know, next year with a, with a little bit of a different scheme on offense mixed with what we have personnel-wise, I think we'll be able to unlock, you know, a, a different – version of our team the name Jim Harbaugh has been out there he just won the national championship but why does it feel like based on what you're saying and Max is saying and what we're hearing from the locker room that if he was brought in it would almost be a momentum stopper it would almost feel deflating no matter how great of a coach he is is that the case well I don't want to say that because you never know what will happen and I'm not going to say you know him coming in will be a negative thing or it won't the team won't accept him or anything like that I don't think it'll be to that level I just think that you know there's a lot of there's a lot of great men out there. You know, there's, there's me, there's JJ, and you know, um, you you may not want us. You may want your husband. You know, and that's just the way that it is. Like that's that's where we at right now. That's our pops right now. You know, like there's a lot of good dads out there, but we but we like our pops. So you know, uh -huh. it, it, but it is. So we'll, we'll see what happens. But obviously, if if whatever were to happen. You know, I'm sure the team would, would still, you know, bring him in with, with open arms. But at the same time, it's a different feeling, man. You you know, you, you heard what Max said, and I'm sure it's a lot of people that feel the same way. You know, I haven't made any decisions on where I stand as far as the coach and, and, and where I'll be. But, it's you know, so it, it tells you how serious we feel about, um, you know, about AP. If, if, if that, one of our that's... best players is to the point where he's saying he'll he'll leave the team if, you know, the, the guys are here, then – I think people need to pay close attention to what, uh, you know, the feeling that they that we have in this building. 
That's crazy. I mean, when you think about that, Max, who is yeah. kind of the face of the young, you know, Raiders, for him to say that, that really shows how important it is for AP to to get the gig. But um, you talk about quarterbacks, and one of the things that every Super Bowl champ has is an elite quarterback. It doesn't matter that we saw Mason Rud- Rudolph and Joe Flacco make mm. the playoffs. Come February mm. in Vegas, the two teams standing are both going to have elite quarterbacks. Trust me on that one. This is hypothetical. This is not based on who you want or who's available or trying to politic. If you could catch passes from any quarterback in mm. the league, regardless mm. of team or situation, mm. even guys that aren't available, all of that, who would it be? And you can't yeah. choose 12. 12 off the you, table. Where 12 did, yeah, 12 table. is off the table because <laughs> you already did that. We saw that. Number, number eight. Eight is off the table, bro. He 12 because he 12 we played him with him in 12. But eight is off the table, bro. No Jets. <laughs> Eight off the table. Eight All off right. the table. Just Shit. a respect thing. You know what? Uh, I don't know, man. I, I'll say, I'll say this. I'll say this. It's a couple quarterbacks that I really like out there, man. I think that it, it depends on what you're saying. If we're talking about a dude that can just find somebody, I mean, I, I like a Kirk Cousins. I think Kirk Cousins is a really good quarterback. I, you know, as mm. far as availability, I think Kirk Kirk's a good a good player. Um. You told me I can't have twelve, so I'll almost can't have twelve. Can't have eight. Can't have that. Um, you know what, man? I say it. that boy Jordan Love looking real good right Ooh. now. Ooh. Jordan, Jordan, uh, Jordan Love, I, I ain't, I ain't going. We ain't gonna do too much, but I'm yeah, just saying, yeah, yeah. Jordan Love, Jordan Love looks excellent right now. Man, so. what about yeah, CJ was- Stroud? What about the other young buck? Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. That that he may be number one. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. CJ Stroud is on. Stroud. That was somebody I was campaigning for uh, coming out. So uh, I was, I was, I was really. I won't say I was anti rookie, but I was not, you know, pro rookie across the board. It wasn't just get somebody young, you know, in here. It was, it was really that was the guy that I was, I felt strongly about, and he felt the same way. I know I've seen a couple of videos where they had asked him who he'd like to throw to coming in the league, and he said me. And, um, I actually got to kick it with him at, at Michael Rubin's uh, all white party out there in, in the Hamptons. And we kicked it for probably like literally eight hours. And, and dude is solid. Like I've never yeah. been around a dude that young coming in that, you know, that's that mature other than probably Trey, uh, Trey Tucker. Like those, those two dudes, probably two of the most mature rookies that I've been around. You know, it's a pretty, pretty good age gap, but you don't really feel it when you're around them, which is something that I feel like, you know, you, uh, J.J., Cobb, Jordy, and, and uh, 12 felt about me, which is something that, you know, I, I kind of see a little bit of a little bit of my personality of CJ and, and definitely in that hunger. But uh, I'll say he dominated a little bit better than I was when I first got in the league. But it's, I'm definitely excited to see it, though. Yeah, let's let's stay on the quarterback for a little bit because you played with AOC. Um, I truly believe that the Raiders need to bring in a veteran. Um, I'm not even really, you know, I know they might draft a quarterback high, but I think they need to bring in a veteran quarterback. Like you kind of mentioned a Kirk cousin, maybe one of those guys veteran and let AOC kind of learn from them. But just talk to us a little bit about AOC. Like, do you see him being a solid quarterback in the national football league in a couple of years? If he sits behind one of these veterans and, and kind of learns a little bit from them? I think so. I think, um, I think Aiden's situation is, is tough because, he got like this was not the way you dream of, you know, getting in and getting your experience in the league. You don't come in and you know you get drafted. You have a really good preseason, and they then they you know we had the the hiccups with with uh, with ten, and then they kind of put him in when he got hurt. He he didn't have a great end to that game. We did have a good end to the game, but the very end of the Chargers game wasn't great. Then you know the the way that he was kind of treated by the staff and the media, I didn't really agree with because that kind of. It was a little bit of like of a bus throw in there, and and I didn't really truly agree with that. So I felt like some of that stuff hindered his confidence early. And but I don't know. It's sometimes you need a guy to sit behind somebody. Sometimes you need to throw him in there and get some experience. So one way or the other, I mean, you know, I, I think he will be a, a good quarterback and and you know somebody that can be a starter in this league. You know, at at some point, and you know, just come with learning a little bit more. And also, like I said, changing the system. This system is for a veteran quarterback that can. You know, knows what he's seeing, knows how to convert at a at a high level. And if you haven't had that experience, you can't have confidence that you're going to do that yet. So it just takes time. But I, I see him getting there eventually, though, for sure. Look, uh, Devante, I just last night I watched the Michael Jackson thriller 40 year documentary. So I don't want to mm-hmm. be starting something. 
You know what I did there? I don't want to be Southern <laughs> Southern, but, but I'm about to because I, I got to bring this up. I, I got to bring this up. I don't know if you saw that the Jets punter gave number mm. five to Garrett Wilson. <laughs> Garrett Wilson gave mm. up number 17. So the number 17 is available with the Jets next year. Mm. We do know <laughs> that while Dave Ziegler and Josh McDaniels were busy basically getting fired, that day was the trade deadline that Jets mm. GM Joe Douglas picked up the phone and did call them and asked mm. about you. And you mm. know that phone call was not made without, well, without uh, – Aaron Rodgers saying, I want you to go get Tay. So Man, when you I heard, heard that news, I'm not asking I'm not asking about trades or anything like that. <laughs> but when you heard that 12 was like, please go get him, how did you react? How did that make you feel? Well, I mean, it's it's tough because that that point in the year, like literally that week was the breaking point for everybody. So it was like, you know, it was a lot of emotions. I didn't really know what I wanted. I knew I wasn't happy with the way that things were going. And it was more so about the way the team looked and me not getting the ball. You know, at the end of the day, when you do the right thing enough and you get enough targets, like you're going to have a successful enough season. Like I'm not sitting here freaking out over one game, two games, not getting the ball enough. But, uh, you know, it was just it just wasn't looking right at that point. So it was it was it was time for something new. So in my mind, it was either time for a change at, you know, the staff or, you know, I had to change locations. But I, I hadn't, you know, I wasn't back here talking to Aaron about doing, you know, putting a trying to trade for me and all this. This is just things that organically came up, came about and, you know, something that they wanted to do for a while, apparently, based off what I heard. And, um, you know, obviously that was that was shut down. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. Like, I, I love being a Raider. I, I don't I don't I don't want to be anywhere else. But, you know, it's just the way that the game goes. Sometimes things happen and, you know, you you live and learn and, and you live with the, the decisions that are made sometimes. But, you um, yeah, I mean, it's a good feeling knowing that you want it from somebody, but it's 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 also an interesting feeling because you know you you're the place that you you want to be, and you know you you got your teammates and everything here, so it's tough. It's a it's an interesting situation, but a lot to figure out this offseason. You know, no, I just like you have you do have a lot to think about, you know, right now, especially at this point in your career that a lot of people really don't have to think about. I didn't have to think about it. I was chasing a Super Bowl, get to a good team. Like, my numbers wasn't Hall of Fame numbers. You know what I'm saying? Right? Even though I felt like I was the greatest receiver in the National Football League, you know what I'm saying? My numbers wasn't Hall of Fame numbers. But you have Hall of Fame numbers, right? So even on top of winning the Super Bowl, and I know that's something that you chase every year, you do not miss games, you could be hurt, whatever. It don't matter what quarterback you're playing with, you're going to go out there because that's just the way you wire. But as for Devontae Adams, like, Going back out there with a rookie quarterback and maybe not being able to kind of have the Hall of Fame numbers or put together that Hall of Fame career, even though you might not be winning a championship, what are some of the thoughts that kind of go through your mind? And some of the thoughts that go through your mind, like, man, we need a veteran in here because that is like, I ain't mad at you. That is something that you have to chase because you're so close to being a Hall of Fame player with Hall of Fame numbers. Is that something that crosses your mind? And is the number just, and is the name Justin Fields or Kirk Cousins for the veteran? I'm um I'm just I'm, gonna, I'm just out here stirring the pot. I'm gonna <laughs> say I'm gonna I'm keep it singular in the in the uh or I guess two. I, I can't go for every uh NFC North quarterback. We already we already praised it enough of them. <laughs> I'm a, I'm gonna stay I'm gonna stay with Kirk in, in love for now, I guess. But no, that's no shade on uh on your boy. Much love to one out there, but, but yeah, we gotta we gotta reel it back in a little bit, reel it in. <laughs> What was the uh, I, f- I forgot? I forgot what the yeah, question. I'll stop no, watching. I'll stop watching no. Michael Jackson documentaries. I'm just you know? a little too feisty today. I'll let JJ take it from I'm here. Saying, I'm just saying. I'm just saying the place that you're in right now in your career, right? You have an opportunity to be one of the greatest ever. That's put on a yeah. gold jacket. Be a Hall of Famer with your numbers. But playing with a young quarterback that might hinder your numbers and not be able to get you there, and it might not necessarily equal a championship. So I know it's some decisions that has to be made on your end because not a lot of people are in your boat. A lot of people can say, man, I want to go here so I can have some, have some success. or I want to go there and have some success, but it ain't hall of fame success. So what's some of the things that kind of go through your mind when you, you hear a young quarterback in AOC and you hear people like Aaron Rodgers and the jets that can come get you and you can put up these hall of fame numbers. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 a lot to think about, man. I think my situation is a lot different than a lot of people because, um, you know, my first of all, I'm going to my 11th year. You know, usually right now we're kind of crazy, bro. It's crazy. Congrats. It's a lot of that, uh, thank you. 
appreciate it. It's a lot of dudes that, you know, have similar situations, but typically it's earlier in the career. So I don't have as much time to, to, you know, just take chances doing things like I like for me, it was a chance coming here, but to me, it was a calculated one. It didn't just, I didn't just come here for money and like no quarterback, like had a successful year, obviously uh, on an individual note and was able to still hold myself to, to that standard that of, of, you know, high level ball that I've been used to playing. And, you know, last year, this, this past year wasn't, you know, it was, it was a, a down year from what I've been doing, but it, you know, it wasn't the worst thing in the world. So I'm still able to, confidently put up numbers but when you talk about a hall of fame where it's a, it takes a certain type of consistency and you know any one of the hits i took this year alone could have put me down and i could have not even had the ability to have the season so just having a guy that you know understands different um you know the way that i'm being played and understand there's going to be a lot more attention on me so the way you have to throw the ball different things that are crucial for me in particular um you know having continuing to have success so I love Aiden and, and I, I love, you know, all the guys that I got to play with this year, uh, Hoy and, and Jimmy, like they're all great guys, but it's definitely a, a crucial piece to have a certain type of quarterback when throwing to me for the for the offense to be successful, let alone for, you know, me to go and try to put up Hall of Fame numbers. So um, it's a it's an interesting thing because a lot of guys like you would think just having a, a player like me would just simply just make the make it easier, which it, it can if you do it the right way. But if it's. If you don't know how to scheme it the right way, it can make it harder. You know, it's the it's the, the the hard part is if you got the quarterback staring at a target that has two guys covering him, you got to have somebody dealing it that really knows what he's looking at and knows what it means to be open. Um, that way we can take advantage of what's happening. Because otherwise, you know, just have me run around out there and, and we'll just get double teamed or we're not scheming it the right way to get me open, then it's just going to make it harder for the quarterback to read the picture. And that's when you got to figure out if it's worth having that guy, you know, a.k.a. me on your team because – you can't make it tougher if you don't match, you know, my level with the, the or the quarterback with my level, um, I guess you could say. Devontae, I know that a guy of your experience and your level as a veteran, really the idea of playing with a rookie quarterback isn't exciting. But as we just spoke about, C.J. Stroud came in and turned everything around. So there are guys that can come in and do that. When you look at the 2024 NFL draft and some of the quarterbacks that could go you know, in the top three, is there anybody that stands out that you think could have the potential? It's not like I'm asking you if you want them to come to the Raiders, just that has the potential that you've gotten to know or that you admire uh, the way that you did CJ Stroud uh, back last year. Well, I think, um, I think based off the situation last year, I paid a little bit more to more attention. I think it was a little bit louder the way that, um, you know, Bryce and CJ were playing. It was a little bit more easier to pay attention to them. I'm not great with college football. I don't know every every guy that's going on out there, and but I did uh, pay a little bit of attention to, to Jaden Daniels. I know he was a a good, tough, uh, obviously won the Heisman, so he's a he's a great player. But that's somebody that I think that, that can come in and, and be a decent player. He's got to slide a little bit more than what he was doing this year because I saw him taking a couple of hits like one seven out there, and I don't know if <laughs> his frame a little smaller than mine. I don't know how much he can take. A lot smaller. A lot smaller. <laughs> but uh, but uh, but I. I do think he he'll be a good player. Um, you know, you never know, it's, but it's that's somebody that I've seen that look like he can throw it, and he's an athlete, can kind of throw on the run, make plays with his legs, all of that. And that's something that uh, it's that's crucial in today's in today's world. You got too many of these dudes like Max chasing down the quarterback, and if the quarterback can't move around, it's I mean it's going to be a lot of sacks. <laughs> so <laughs> having somebody like him will be crucial for our team um, or for any team. But you know, if, if for whatever reason he was to go to the Raiders. Um, you know, having that ability to move around and create and, and make plays like that from what I've seen would be big. Playoffs is here, bro. I want to get your Super Bowl pick. I want to know who who you got going to be in it, um, who you think going to win it. You got Lamar Action Jackson. You got C.J. Stroud playing each other. You got the Niners playing our Packers. You got who who else is out? You got Chiefs, Buffalo, Josh Allen, and 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 Patty Mahomes, and I think the fourth one is Baker Mayfield and the Detroit the Detroit Lions, bro, is about to have a chance to go to the NFC Championship. Ain't that crazy? But your crazy. Super Bowl pick, bro, who you think gonna make it to that thing and and get this thing done in Vegas? Make it? I think I think you got to say the Niners out the out the NFC. Like I feel like the Niners is probably the most consistent football team in the league right now other than the Ravens and I got to put them in it too. I mean, if you Lamar Lamar 
Lamar, I'm gonna just call him Lamar and them. Lamar and them came because <laughs> that's what it is. Right, you can't you can't do much about it, man. I mean, he's just he's too dynamic. He acting like he really can throw the ball now too. So he so he 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 killing people. Just they, they don't know how to play him. He dropped yeah. back left, if flipping around, throwing the ball downfield. Still got the ability to to run. They probably gonna go fourth and fourth down. Like it's just too much stress on you. And then that's just the offense. And then you look at like, the defense, and it's like a like an old school like like Bears defense, and you like mm-hmm. what the hell is going on? How is this team like this <laughs> this strong like this? So I think it's gonna come down. It's gonna be a great game, but I have to say the the you know, and I would love to say CJ, but you know the the typically the teams that win these games, Chiefs, Bills, like it's the team the, the teams that been in these games the most, and they you know they 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 don't freeze up in these when they, when they get these these moments, you know, and I think that's why we were good and. Green Bay, not good enough to win the Super Bowl, but we we won plenty of playoff games because we just been in those games and we didn't we didn't freak out when we got in there. You know, it was like just another game for us, and um, you know, this it's gonna come down to Baltimore or the Niners in my mind. Who do you pick? Ravens, Niners. Who you? Who do you pick? Yep. Man, I wouldn't be mad if if Baltimore won. I think I'd be more mad if the Niners won. I wouldn't hate, but I I'd yeah. be a little bit mad. <laughs> You know, you know, you know where got, your girls yeah. from, right? You know yeah, what city your girls yeah, yeah. from. Amber, Amber from right. Baltimore. She's yeah. from out right there. Mm-hmm. I'm with you oh, all so the way. So all right. We're going to have a little fun with you, Devonta. We just have a couple questions. These are kind of hypotheticals. All right. So just roll with it. No matter how. You know me and JJ wrote them, so they're crazy. So just yeah, roll yeah, with yeah, them. All right. Know. All right. Be. You got to give us your answer on all these. Um, yeah. All right. This is a little this or that question. Yeah. Speaking of Lamar Jackson. You could either play on a team where Lamar Jackson is the quarterback and you're guaranteed a Super Bowl, but as the leading receiver, you might have 858 yard season like Zay Flowers, dead max. Ooh. Or Ooh. you could go to a team like Miami, Dallas, uh, mm. Detroit, where, you know, they're slinging that thing. I know two of those have been eliminated, so they're not going to the Super Bowl, but they're slinging mm. that thing. And perhaps your Hall of Fame career is solidified. You have CD Lamb, 1600 yard season. 1700. Hey, <laughs> look. <laughs> hey, CD, CD, CD did his thing, and yes, he did. I want not take no credit, but I did get on uh, I Am Athlete and tell y'all boy CD was a top five receiver, and everybody mm-hmm. was trying to give me backlash and all that. And I said, okay, <laughs> I said Mike Evans, he went in there and did what he did again, mm-hmm. you know. So I ain't, I ain't, I ain't gonna get into that, but uh, I would say right now, man, I've I've had big seasons, man. To me, to me, it's like this is a long winded answer, but to me. I think it's funny that we judge who's the best receiver off of who has the most yards anyway, because not everybody's mm-hmm. getting the same targets. The offense ain't the same. Like that, that shouldn't be what's like to me. If you have 1300 and somebody has 15 and a half to me, you can have a better season than them with that 1300, depending on what no the question. touchdown and, and just how it looked, whatever you did. Mm-hmm. So I've had big seasons. I don't necessarily need the 1700. That, that would feel great. And now if you told me I had the, that was going to get the record, I might have to think about something different. If you said two two K, then that's, that that might be a little different. To think about it, but if you giving me a bowl and I get to get out there with Dub and Lamar and 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 have mm. fun, boys be having. Mm. I, I think I, I think I might take that eight eight nine hundred and just and keep it. Give me ten tugs and I and I'm good. <laughs> I, Eric DaCosta just went. Hold up. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm about to make no a phone doubt. call. No <laughs> doubt. He said he Eric, said twenty. Eric he said twenty. Like, <laughs> yeah. He said Odell on that twenty million one year. He gonna be gone next year after yeah. this year. We got a little money to get him off. But hey, no, man. um, I got I got a funny one for you, bro. Because this is you know we be we be dialing up some crazy questions. All right. So for the rest of your life, bro. For the rest of your life. <laughs> for the rest oh, of your shit. life, bro. You can only wash one thing, bro. And that is your bed sheets or your bath towel. So you either got to dry off with a rusty, crusty, dusty bath towel for the rest of your life, bro. Or you got to sleep in them bed bugs and you got to be getting it on with the wifey. <laughs> bro, you can throw something over the over the bed. You can make it work. You can make it work with the bed, but the, the towel? Come on, man. I'm not, I'm not, You. what's the point? What's the point of showering? You you gonna bruh. put a dirty ass towel? I on said your body? the same thing. Bruh, I was like for, the towel for the rest of your life, bro. You know how Games many bed bugs gonna be tearing. Games you chose up. sheets. I chose towel because I'm with you, Devante. I'm clean when I get out of the shower, so Ooh. I'm wiping myself, my clean self off. Bruh. So the towel's not that dirty, right? Bro, but then bed sheets. I should have prefaced, prefaced it like this. I have a thing like well, my my like towel. 
I don't understand how people can drive, go in the nuts and do all of that and then <laughs> hang it back on the hook. That thing get washed every time now. So I like I couldn't I already have a thing against that. So I'm I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to go ahead and make Bruh. that bed it gotta be. Because you can mess around and have the same part of the towel go on your face next time. And that's just devastating. Bro, but what you can do is not gonna be that crazy because you can just get in the shower right before you get in the bed every single time and your bed is gonna be significantly for the your rest of your life. So you, yeah, and you go you go dry off and be fresh and clean and get back in that bed. <laughs> Hey, I might go every other day, one on top, one underneath the seat, <laughs> just just to make sure. Oh, <laughs> I was like turning the drawers inside out. We good. We gonna figure it out. <laughs> hey, we all done did that though. Hold on, man. Let's uh, flip these things uh, around. Okay. Go about I'm. I can't take it. I can't breathe, and I'm oh, getting over pneumonia. Man. So if I go into coughing fit, excuse oh, me. Oh, y'all are crazy. We're, all right, listen. Um, oh, man. JJ, you know, he's been my co-host years now, going back to NFL oh, Network. Man. So he's, I've learned, I'm an East Coast girl. I've learned a lot. <laughs> You're from East Palo Alto. I've learned a lot about the Bay Area. Now I know he showed me about getting stupid, thizzle. Mm. I had no idea what dance <laughs> you were doing. In the, he told me about tacos, La Victoria and San Josie. Uh, mm. I'm, I'm blowing the whistle. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm doing all this yeah. stuff, right? <laughs> oh, I know man. that uh, you love music. We saw you represent the Bay Area dancing. If you had to pick one, you could never hear music again, Ooh. or you could never watch sports again. Ooh. Which one? I'm honestly no joke. I would say never watch sports again over mm. music. I'm with sure. you. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm like it's been killing me since we've been on here, not hearing no music. Yeah. Right, honestly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, we gotta add some I, music like, next time. I'll get the Bay Area music. soundtrack. You know what I'm nah, I'm, I'm I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you, but I like I can't I can't do nothing without music. Like you put me on a flight without a like it can be a thirty minute flight. It'll feel like it's a twelve hour flight if I don't have any music. Can't do it. Yeah, no, I'm with I'm with y'all. Sports sports got to go. Music is just everything. Even though sports changed our lives, you know, music yeah. is just something that that you can't live without. I mean, you get ready for a football game with music. If you ain't got ready for a football game with music, we in trouble. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's finna be the you finna be out there just going through the motions. So I'm right. We all with three the music agree as well. We all I'll, three I'll agree. Check, I'll check scores. I'll be all right. I'll check scores. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> all right, JJ, do you have the next one? Or you want me to do it? What's the next one? I forgot. The I next know one. you don't even have your notes up. See, this yeah, is I why I. That's how much I know him. Same, um, okay, same, same okay. Girlfriend. Here we go. If you know, it's clear that you love music, but I'm, I'm talking about dirty sheets. <laughs> if, if you had to give up music for the rest of your Ooh. life, wait, no, hold on. <laughs> I know where she going. With she mix it up. If you to. had to give up, let me say, music. Or you could never do the nasty again. Oh no! Yeah. Or I, I could say it. football or the nasty. Which one are you picking? I would retire right now. <laughs> <This second. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think every, I think every man. <laughs> yeah, that's how a wrap. You, how, do you, how do you retire? That's what I need to do. You know, yeah. You just walking. You walking up. To, you walking up to Mark right now. Like, listen here, man. <laughs> I appreciate it. But I don't know what, we're out, bro. I don't know what you could do for me to to make me say I'll give that up. <laughs> mm, yeah, that's like, what that's right. the whole point. I don't Not think anybody would. Like, if you, if you yeah. ask me, if I was like, if I never made it, and I, you know what I mean, like I was just working nine to five, like if I was struggling, you know, like where my parents did or something like that, I might have to just consider it and then just take care of that myself for the rest of my life. But <laughs> but <laughs> but, uh, but what I'm what I'm gonna tell you is when when you when you live in the way that I do now that like it's nope. not too many things that you're gonna put above that. Man, listen <laughs> just here, listen hang your here. cleats up tomorrow. Listen I think here. you're not alone be, in that one. I will be a bum on the street getting it in. I. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, y'all talking about I can't get that up. And even if it was that or music, I'm gonna be in there singing tour, beatboxing. <laughs> we we gonna figure this thing out. But I ain't giving that up. I'm telling you, it's it. way it's way more bums out there getting it in than it is rich dudes. Not that's what I'm saying. I got I got to get it in. I sleep in the car. It's okay. all good. I no can't. I can't do I this. Okay, car. this is the last one. You've been you've been oh, wonderful. Man. This is the last. This is a more serious one. Uh, okay, this is hypothetical. Pick one. You could trade places with one receiver. Tyreek Hill, which means you have superpowers. You're the fat, you're cheetah. You're the fastest guy ever. You can blow by any coverage. 
Puka Nakua, which means you go back in time and you have your youth, but you have the knowledge that you have now. And you could go through the league, the future 11 years with his knowledge and his youth, though. Or Jerry Rice, where you're locked in to be the GOAT already. Mm. Mm. Damn, that's tough. That's tough. Um, You know what? Had I not had I not done it the right way, I might say, you know, just because knowing what I know now, if I would have known my rookie year, I feel like I could have done some different things. But I feel like I've I've done enough. But I think I got to see how fast how, how fast uh, Tyree. Really, <laughs> I got I got to see what that feel like because like he he do something different to to the defenders out there. Them boys don't even right. act. He got the ball in his hand. I, I wish I could trust my speed that much. Man. Your and route running and his speed that I can't yeah. I couldn't even imagine. He be he be he be running past triple teams like the boys ain't even there, which which is crazy. <laughs> but for me, I'm the goat. That's all I'm saying right now. Give me <laughs> Jerry <laughs> Rice's number. Whoever y'all talking about, uh, even though he fast and he jumping high and he got routes, hey, they all second, bro. But here's I my argument. Here's my argument with that. You two are dogs. You two have earned what you did in this league to just be handed the goat. I think mm. that would not fit with you, both of your personalities. Like Ooh. you would want to have earned it. Yeah. Dang, well, you, that, you go, you go, you go respond like you going to respond like that. I'm going to go back and play. Right. <laughs> right. 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 She said, yo, I don't think y'all want to just be handed the, you the know title. What I'm like saying? <laughs> yeah. yeah. For me, for me, I would say being the, the goat would be dope, but I'm not playing 20 years in, in, in the league. So I don't, I don't know if you if you're saying I have to do it the way he did it or or any type oh, of way. That's but, true. But if I had if I had to play that long, boy, I don't I don't know if I'm gonna yeah. go for a thousand and forty. Yeah. But I even get it. listening to that, even listening to that Puka Nakua, like if I would have known in year eight, like and known that as a rookie, you know what I'm saying? Like even from the route running, from the defenses, from where the quarterbacks is looking to put the ball. Like if I would have known that in year one with all that knowledge that, you know, I gained over, you know, the first five or six years of my career, that's dangerous too. You know what I'm saying? Like, could you imagine what you know right now, Tay, you knew year one, you know what I mean? Like how to set cats up and all that, man, that, that, that's, that's, that's a different angle too. Yeah. I think my first three years would have, you know, my third year, I had 12 tugs, basically a thousand with the 997. So it was a good year. The first two years was first year was good enough because I was a rookie. Second year was obviously a down year. But I'm just thinking about those years with those numbers, what it looked like if I would have made those, you know, 15 it's coming out mm -hmm. the gate. Like, yeah. you know, that's a, that's an extra, you know, 15 on the, you know, my career or no whatever. No question. And that's, that's, that's a big career. difference. So awesome having Devontae Adams on. Um, you know, there's a lot of questions with him going forward. Should the Raiders trade him or not? I know we joked around about the Jets. The Jets have kind of a cap issue that yeah. could be a problem. But I'll tell you one thing. When 12 wants something, he gets it, doesn't he, JJ? Yes, it was good to talk to my brother, crack some jokes with him, talk some football, talk all that good stuff. But as you know, Amber, 12 or eight now is really eight now. It's kind of weird. Yeah. yeah. It's really close to our hearts because we know how special he is and how special of a quarterback he is and really how special a friend that he's been to. Us. So I will not, I will not be surprised if it happens. Um, if the Raiders go surprised. rookie quarterback, you know, yep. Devontae is going to no be doubt. 31. He's a no big doubt. trade asset that kind of doesn't fit into the age group of what they're building there. And it, it could happen. Not that we would want to see him outside of the Raiders. Oh, we we want to see him as a Raider, but we also want to see what's best for Devontae. Yeah. And gosh, he's hilarious. I didn't know he's that funny. No and I've covered question. him for yeah, a couple of years. That's my dog. I don't, I don't know him since he was, since he was yay high in high school. That's my brother. So all the jokes and cracking jokes, the inside stories and all that good stuff. You know what I mean? No, he, he's a character, man. Fun to be around. All right. Well, that'll do it. Coming up uh, next week on two G's and a pod. We're going to have some more playoff talk. Uh, we're going to bring you the biggest guests. We can't wait to see you then.